Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge 15. Brought to you by ServiceNow. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are back here live in Las Vegas. This is Silicon Angle, which is theCUBE, our flagship program, where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. Show my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.com. Our next guest is a friend of theCUBE, Jay Anderson, CIO of ServiceNow. Great to see you again. Uh, you. Back Great in the action. Um, so CIO, we've been talking to a lot of CIOs. Uh, yeah, this, well we tend to attract them. You guys have a lot of great customers here. <laughs> Absolutely. Really been fantastic. Um, you're on the CIO on the side that's promoting all this action here. Um, we talked to a lot of CIOs on the, in the practitioner and at the market. People are happy. So, I mean, you, <laughs> are you eating your own dog food internally? Are you happy? You bet, John. <laughs> in fact, uh, if I do my job right, I'm, I'm the chief dog food taster, <laughs> right? And uh, unfortunately, they, the lab team can build it faster than I can taste it, so I, I haven't used all of the silicon, uh, I'm sorry, of the service now products, but I'm, I'm actively trying to get as much of this going internally as I can, and, and when Frank hired me, that was an explicit part of my charter. Do a better job using our product to run our company, and be able to showcase that for our customers. So I spend a lot of time out talking to customers. We had Matt customer. Shimmeron said he builds his own app, so you present that in production? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, none of Matt's stuff goes live, no, not without the. All right, so you got to tell our audience a story. So you were hanging out skiing, you, you knew Frank from your know, previous company, right? That's right, Frank and was And you weren't me. interested in getting back into it, into the Well, I needed a break, thing. Okay. Right? We, we had a great run at Data Domain EMC, I did that for six years, and I was exhausted, really, and I just wanted a break, so I took, um, six months off, I guess, and at that time, you know, ServiceNow was doing great, they needed talent, Frank was after me, and I kind of told him, hey man, leave me alone, I'm skiing. <laughs> and then he sent me this note, the story is, he sent me this note in April that said, ski season's over, time's up. <laughs> Right. That was the whole email, <laughs> classic Slootman style, <laughs> and, uh, and here I am. Right. He's, he's a very a, persuasive right, man. Right, he's persuasive in a very direct kind of way, isn't he? That, I so love the success, is, the build-out's been great. I mean, look at the history, the, today we heard in the keynote the, um, the story. I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazing entrepreneurial classic, yeah. success story. Founders, CEO, gets replaced. In this case, the VCs were really gray, and he opted into the natural thing to say, no, no, I don't want to be CEO, I want to write code. And Frank gets recruited, world-class CEO, and brings the team in. And then you guys scaled up. And I remember Frank at VMworld, was it 2012 on theCUBE, said, you know, it's all about scale, scaling sales, scaling operations. So this thing, we're here in the next 10 years. So are you involved in that discussion? Are you building the systems internally to build that next 10 year run? And what is that plan? Yes, John, absolutely, right? We are growing rapidly. and and um, have put a lot of focus historically on the cloud operation side that our customers depend on, but to some extent had neglected our internal business in that rapid growth phase. And, and so when I came in, it was to address that problem exactly. We needed to be able to scale the company. We can't possibly hire people at the rate that our customer base is growing, so we have to become more efficient. And that's absolutely what I'm trying to do. Um, and it's central to our to our work, and we're using ServiceNow technology to do that. So you guys have a great building, right? On um, uh, was it Montague or yeah, Montague and 101. Montague 101. Yeah. But now you guys are moving into a new facility. That's right. So just down the street. Just down the street, which is a beautiful building. It is. And be much so nicer. Does that affect your job? And then, you know, how do you <laughs> transition over? Tell us about that new building. <laughs> right, it does affect my job. Um, my team is getting that building ready for us. <laughs> yeah, they're they're high. You know, we work really closely with the facilities organization because we have to put the infrastructure in yeah. place. We got to build out the AV solutions, all of that stuff. So we're. What's the we're, coolest thing going in that building from an IT standpoint? Video <laughs> conferencing? Is it the? Yeah, I think um, probably so. You know, the communication technology. We're big. We're a pretty distributed organization. Right. And we, we collaborate a lot uh, over WebEx, over telepresence, um, pretty much all in with the Cisco tool set on that. And, and this is kind of a, a chance when we're moving down the street, a chance to upgrade some of that equipment, take a fresh approach, and really build out the collaboration things. You know, the coolest thing in that building right now is a beautiful gym. 
right? But when the people get there, we're actually going to do some work too, and so that's what my team's trying to get ready for. Like basketball courts, street uh, hockey. No, no, nothing uh, quite like that. Just like <laughs> weights. Yeah, all that stuff. And I, you know, it was interesting because when I first saw the building, it was it's largely unfinished, but they had finished the gym and it was gorgeous, full of equipment, the whole nine yards. So I asked, you know, is this how you is this how you sell a building in Silicon Valley now? You build a nice gym and that that seals the deal. But that seems to be part of well, the Well, hit the traffic, hit the gym, shower at work, boom, at exactly. your desk by 738. You bet. <laughs> you know, yeah, you especially when you East Bay. <laughs> All right, so what other challenges you have going on? Share with some insight. Just share with the audience what you're working on, some of the cool things you're deploying. Well, yeah, we're doing a lot. What, what we're trying to do is address unstructured workflows all around the organization, right? Not just in IT, but we've built case management for HR facilities. We've built a really nice procurement and asset management solution uh, in finance. We actually run our, our sales team on ServiceNow technology. We build our own CRM internally. Uh, we don't spend a lot of time talking to customers about that. It's usually not too interesting for them, but that does keep my team really busy. So it's a clean sheet of paper on that, so you did it all on ServiceNow. That's right. That's right. So you essentially have a transaction system built on, on ServiceNow. Exactly. Now. Uh, we, we've integrated deeply with SAP. It's a pretty straightforward, simple integration, but it expands the power tremendously. Um, and the first step was kind of how we purchase goods, and of course then orders come in through, through the CRM, and we have to get that into SAP, right? So we built that out, but now you saw our announcement of the ServiceNow store. That's a new revenue stream, and there's financial transactions that have to happen there. We take the order, but we have to pay the ISV. We've got to handle taxes. Um, also, we're putting in place a new learning management system. Again, that's a source of revenue. People pay for training. So we've got multiple financial flows now kind of converging on this um, financial engine that we've built with ServiceNow and SAP tightly integrated. So in SAP it. is the system of record. Exactly. Okay, and you guys are the front end to that system. Yeah, of we call ourselves a system of engagement. Yeah. Right, and that's ex you're you're right on, Dave. And that's one of the key concepts I try to communicate when I'm out there with folks. Is in IT we are the system of record. ServiceNow is a system of record in IT. But when you move into HR, they likely have an HRIS system, right? Oh, yeah. And we don't want that job. Uh, we respect that role. You can move into finance, you typically have a financial engine, right? So for us, that's Workday and SAP, and we've integrated with both of those. In fact, the Workday integration is out of the box in Fuji, right? That's part of the product now. Right. So the idea is you do work in service now. You process work. It's a workflow engine. It's built around task. That's where the employees come to do work. And you push and pull information from the systems of record to after the work is done, or to allow you to do the work, and then after the work is done. So case in point, we, we pull the org chart out of Workday. It's the source of truth for our organization. If I want to route something to your boss, it helps if I know who they are this week, right? So I get that out of Workday, and now ServiceNow can navigate the org chart, process the work, and then when I'm done maybe processing your purchase request, I push the result down into SAP, my system or record. That's where it has to end up. But the work gets done in service now. So that's this idea of system of engagement, engage the employees through this workflow tool, and then put the data where it needs to be, or pull the data to inform you that. You validate engine. that it got there and how it got yeah. there, so you've got a complete audit trail. Right, we've got end a end complete, life cycle. the audit trail is really important. You've got all, you know, in the case of our purchasing activity, you've got the initial request, every approval, any data that anyone's added along the way, right there in service now, audit ready, makes it easier for the person to manage that organization, but if you ever want to go back and figure out what happened, you're not jumping around, you're not looking at emails, it's all there in that record. Right? Wow, what a dramatically different role that you're describing now that I'm imagining what you, your role was at Data Domain, <laughs> where your dog footing was better backup. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, this is a actually <laughs> transforming your IT processes. In Data Domain way. was a great experience, but this is a lot more fun because it's just, it, you know, it's not it's an infrastructure. It's modern, it's cutting edge. Right. And it, and it addresses the needs all across the business, right? Every business. And it's in the it's CIO's all business. wheelhouse. <laughs> it's all, all business, business, all functions, because yeah. everybody's yeah. got unstructured work. There's, yeah. you know, marketing's got unstructured work. Take that up from, the, you know, put work. that on the web. Take that down, update this collateral. If that's happening in email, you can't capture the work. You can't characterize what's going on. You don't know where the big okay. items are. So right? I, got a, I got a hard question for you. So something that we think about all the time, so I might, you got you here on the, on the brain trust table unstructured data 
inbound lead gen, social media is now a big deal. Obviously, we're the cube, we're, we're crowd chatting. Um, as an IT person, how do you look at that data? Do you have systems for that? Is there yeah, we do. Is, that's lead gens changing? Emails yeah. going away not only on work, but like no one wants to fill out an email form. So the young workforce wants to do things socially. Instagram. Uh, true, true. So our, our lead our lead engine is Eloqua. Right? It's a cloud solution, and again, we've got that integrated with ServiceNow. Which so uh, basically, you know, those those kind of prospect facing systems are best of, best of breed solutions. We can choose those from the various suppliers and then we bring that information in through an integration and start working on it in ServiceNow and actually um, follow the activity. At some point if we qualify it, uh, get some meetings going, it will become it will so become you plug an their opportunity. marketing cloud in, into ServiceNow. So exactly they're right. so that instead of rebuilding your own system, you just plug in pre existing off the shelf, cut, cutting right. edge, marketing right. cloud stuff. Yeah, if, uh, I have a nice slide that shows our system landscape and kind of each vertical yeah. in the company and then ServiceNow kind of across all of that with, with points of integration. Yeah. Right. Your so fabric it, across front ending, whatever you need right. to. So back to our prior comment, you know, Eloqua is a source of truth for leads for us. It's the system of record, but we bring that data in and start doing work with it. Okay, um, you were at CIO Decisions earlier. I was, um, yes. Tell us about what went on there. I presume you were speaking to that audience. And well, I was playing host, so <laughs> I did I did have a monologue at the front, um, but then I was just the stooge the rest of the time. <laughs> but but this, the central uh, discussion of the CIO Decisions was what is the role of the CIO going forward, right? We're in the cloud era. The infrastructure is going away. Our traditional work was managing that infrastructure. That job's disappearing. Yeah. And, and our lines of business can stand up cloud solutions with a phone call and a credit card, right? So my line is, in the cloud era, everyone in the organization can get us pregnant, but IT ends up raising all the kids, right? <laughs> yeah. So I get, I get calls quote. like, uh, yeah. hey, I really like my cloud solution that I stood up, but now I need an integration, so that makes it an IT project, right? Or. Uh, I stood up this cloud solution and now three other functions want to use it, and it's getting complicated. So that makes it an IT project, right? So you know your choice as an IT leader now is, yeah. you want to be the janitor, you're trying to cobble these things together, clean up the mess that the, that the lines of business have created, or do you want to try to get out ahead of that and help them transform the way work's getting done and be relevant by yeah. attacking work and all the those things? But the challenge is the challenge. First of all, it's super. You got to get strategic on that business front. But Frank was on the cube saying that's quite the problem that ServiceNow is solving, <laughs> which is they don't want they want to give the business units the power to be creative, right? But have some adaptability with IT. So <laughs> explain the difference. It's a nuance right there because what you're saying is you want IT to be proactive and strategic but not projecting to the, say, HR person how to, when to do reviews or, you know what I'm saying? So like, let the, it have some autonomy. Absolutely. So explain yes. that nuance. <laughs> I will. Um, what I want to do for my lines of business is help them structure the work that's going on in their organization so they can tell what's going on, so they can apply management basics, get the data to show them what's going on, help them apply workflow to address some of their hot spots, right? I'm not telling them how to run their business. I'm helping their managers perform. Um, and I want to partner with them. When they decide they want to go after a solution, I want to be there to make sure that we understand architecturally how it's going to fit in and we don't end up with this big mess, right? So we're actively partnering and we, we, we're implementing InsideSales.com. My team was there hand in hand with sales making that selection, yeah. doing the review, You're enabling them. implementing, ah, that's my job. Right? I'm yeah. not building product, yeah. I'm not delivering, I'm not selling product, and I'm not supporting customers, right? And if I'm not doing one of those three things, I better be supporting the people who are. Well, it's right? and that's, that's how I view my job, I'm an enabler. I don't run IT, that's not my job. Yeah, yeah. The IT organization is just a, a means to the end, which is address the needs of the, of the broader But back workforce. to the unstructured work and unstructured data comment, that's now, uh, freedom, because now the old database models was the structure of the database would dictate the kind of work, <laughs> forms, and structure. Exactly. So right. that is what ServiceNow's value proposition is, right? Yeah, we have that single source of truth now with the cloud, right? We've got all the data in one place, so we we don't have to be building spreadsheets to try to figure out what's going on, and we don't have 
your spreadsheet and my spreadsheet disagreeing, and now we're having a meeting to try to reconcile our spreadsheet. And of course, you made yours a week ago, and mine was yesterday, so we've got ten a temporal emails went problem. back and forth. <laughs> None of that anymore, right? That's yeah, all wasted yeah. time. So you know, these Microsoft tools have helped us tremendously to be more productive. But in the cloud era, there's another wave of productivity, and that's building these structured workflows, having a single source of truth relieving people of all that work to try to figure out what's going on. It's in the system. And each of them has their own unique view. We give them a different lens into that data, but they're all looking at real-time information that's accurate, and we're no longer arguing about what's going on. We're just doing the job. We talk about a lot on theCUBE. We're on the cusp, we feel, of a productivity renaissance, and it's just going to explode. Um, I totally agree. And, and, and so, well, this, you always talk about stovepipes. I mean, that's your favorite term. Oh, and yeah, those are gone. You're, I mean, that's like the the stovepipes of different applications. And well, they're not gone, and that's part of the problem. Um, you're you're you're, you're <laughs> a silo buster. <laughs> what kind of you hear <laughs> internally? I like that. Yeah, right. Silo buster. Is there a song in there? Who are you going to call? Who are you going to call? Call IT. It's a state, exactly. state puff silo buster. Yeah. So I loved um, I loved the email that you sent Frank when he said I need an iPhone six. Right. How do I get that new iPhone? <laughs> yeah. Right. You sent him a link. Yeah. Someone asked no. me if that was a uh, CLM. You know what a CLM is? a career limiting move, <laughs> right? So the CEO sends me an email and says, how do I get an iPhone, right? Now I could have just gone and taken care of that for him. That's maybe what he expected, but but he runs a, a company that's about not using email. So I just sent him the link to the portal. And then I held my breath for no about words five around minutes. It. No, no <laughs> just link, right? And I held my breath. I was actually at a, a CIO conference where I was going to be speaking, and I was kind of looking at my phone, wondering <laughs> if I needed to uh, bother to come home or not. And uh, about five minutes later, after I sent that mail, I got a note back from Frank that said, hey, that was pretty easy, even from 41,000 feet. He was flying across yeah. the country when it happened, which I didn't realize. That's fantastic. He, he had, ordered online, he had... Right, he didn't have to call his EA, they, you know, no special privileges. He did just exactly what every other employee does, go to the portal, give us the information, workflow kicked in, now, the only problem in the whole story was he picked a configuration that took a long time to be delivered, so I had to hear about that for quite a Where's my phone? <laughs> that's <laughs> not my problem. Yeah, you should have picked one. <laughs> Classic <laughs> IT, that's not my problem. That's Apple's problem. You right. can't do a service now and do Apple. Yeah, he got a real kick out of that, and it, it turns out that he likes to tell that story, The too. 64 gig one, did he get the high memory? Yeah, I think the, that was his problem. The, the gold, right? I, yeah. I think he bought a 6 Plus, and then he decided that was too big. So. Yeah. <laughs> Frank <laughs> likes to experiment with a lot of different... What's stuff? the biggest thing uh, you'd share with folks out there about ServiceNow's culture? I mean, you're a seasoned vet, you know, you've been there, done that. Great company, certainly the vibe here. With people that aren't here at the event watching live or on demand, what's the vibe here at ServiceNow and the culture and the customers and the, some of the profiles and developers here? Right, well, I think, you know, in terms of what our customers should know about our culture, it's that we're highly transparent. As an organization, we want to be very open to our customers. And we spend a lot of time showing them how we actually do things internally to make them comfortable with how we service them, but also to help them implement these things, right? And it's not just me on the business side. Dan McGee's organization, massive, high volume, very mature use of ServiceNow, change management, orchestration, everything they do is automated, big, highly accurate CMDB. So both sides of our company love to spend time with customers, showing them how this stuff works and showing them that it's real and giving them those real examples. So I think the most important part of our culture is, and it's it's Frank, I mean, he, he runs on transparency. He runs a tight ship, both um, metaphorically yes. and literally yeah, on his own exactly ship. Right. Um, so I think that's a really important element of our culture. We're a high performance team, we have high expectations of each other. And again, you'd expect that if you were, if you know Frank, right? That definitely mm -hmm. permeates down through the organization. You know, That's why I'm sure he loved your email. Yeah, he, no, he no got a Frank. great, he was great like, kick. He's not offended, yes. he's like, great. No, he, he, this is what I want. He thought like, that was really great. hilarious. Yeah. It took him back. And, and the way he tells the story is, we all reflexively go to email. It's just so much part of the fabric of how work gets done that we don't even think about it. And even Frank, the guy running the company that's systematically getting email out of the system when he wanted that phone, his first instinct was to go to email, right? Yeah. So when I sent him back that link, 
it kind of set him back. And, and what he realized is even I reflexively reached for email, and my CIO kind of put that back in my face, and he loves that. He loves to tell that story. Well, because yeah, he's self-aware. I mean, that's why. Yeah, but, that's the, but that's yes. the problem with email. You think you're checking the box as the requester, and it goes. And you're not really sure where it goes. Well, yeah, I, I did my part. Right. I asked for a service. Yeah, what's, <laughs> what's the first thing you do after you send an email hoping to get some service? You send another one to find out if anyone got the first one. Yeah, right? follow up, where is my iPhone? You're already, you already got two emails going, and you haven't even done anything yet, right? Nothing's even started to happen yet. And then, of course, the guy who finally figures out that he has your request, first thing he realizes is, well, you only sent him half the information that he needs, so he has to send you another email back to get the rest of the information. You've got to email him back to give him a four. You've already got four emails, I mean, and he's just getting started. Right. It's a classic cost of ownership argument on steroids because what it is, it's it's just so killer in terms of productivity. It, it is. Well, you said it, right? Yeah. There's a new era coming. The cloud is fundamentally different. These We've historically, as humans through all of time, have done work with messaging systems, verbal communication, written communication, telephones, and then we got really productive because we had email and spreadsheets, right? But now we have a cloud, and that's highly disruptive. I think it's a, it's not evolution. This is revolution. You have these workflow tools. You've got a single system of record. It's a game changer. And this productivity drain study that we just released, it shows you exactly how much work is going down the toilet. It's not work. How much activity is going down the toilet by people yeah. wasting time There's using cycles. these. Yeah. And, and well, you, well, Larry Page talked about how people he thinks people will be working less and doing more productivity in an ideal state down the road with technology. It sure. should be that way. Absolutely. Get home and see your well, kids. Well, that's back to your scale question, yeah. right? The only way we can scale as an organization is if the work happens much more efficiently. And that's why my job is so urgent, because it's quite possible for us to be highly successful selling this stuff and be crushed by our own growth. Right? The, yeah. There's the a comment on Twitter about business doesn't close, and the issue that we have, and certainly we're now in this digital age, my kids are digital natives now, is that works every day. But there's an, uh, you can be in the soccer side of the soccer fields for my kids, and I'll send a text, but I don't want to do an email thread. I can right. say, I can do a, a link and, and ping someone, notify back and forth. I'm, I can be mentally present for a seven. slice of time and have a great day. Oh, right? That's exactly, it's a seven by 24 world, right? So. When we built this structured system for purchasing, right, we took the cycle time for the average purchase request from five days down to two. 60% reduction in cycle time, right? And it feels more reasonable to yeah. get something done in two days than mm -hmm. five. Well, where did those three days, what, were, what was going on during those three days, right? Well, somebody emailed the first approver. And then maybe they emailed back at midnight, but that person didn't come in the, the buyer didn't come in until yeah. 8 a.m. to see that they got an approval and figure out who to send the next one to. You're losing time, right? Yeah. But with a, with a workflow engine, if you approve it on the soccer field, or if you're up at 4 a.m. and approve it, it's in the next person's queue instantly. Yeah. Right. Well, so that's where all of a sudden those three days of wasted work. In, in are operations gone. research, you know, they study the impact of reduction in elapsed time. And the impact that's on productivity, right. and it's enormous. It's the best, you know, cycle well, time's a great metric of what's going on in your yeah. system, right? And the, so. the notion of presence that you guys introduced at this conference, not, a, not an, in unified communications, it's been around for a while, presence, information, you know, telepresence, and real time is interesting, because now you have productivity, not just from a work perspective, personal productivity. You can literally have a new way, because this omnidirectional world we live in is, you know, everywhere. I could be productive at, on my way to the airport in an exactly. Uber, and not have to go through my email and scan. I can just be dealing with what's going on in, yeah. in real time. So I have multiple channels of reality, personal exactly. and business. Yeah, I can't wait to be deploying the things that I saw this morning to my team, <laughs> right? It's just yeah. so exciting to see the mobility, you know, and, and to see those notifications popping up just like I get from Facebook, of, hey, something just happened, you know, you've got a notification, yeah. that little icon or the little number on the icon on the phone. Well, seeing it happen in real it's time. It's going to be amazing. Well, you got right? hey, somebody's talking to me. Oh, yeah, that's right? just. I mean, you love it on text. Oh, okay, he's, right. he's there. That's, gonna about, get, gonna know, that's about as far from sending that email into the ether as you can get, <laughs> right. right? I'm having a real-time conversation with the person who's going to help me. I'm not wondering if something might happen. I'm seeing it happen right before Well, how about this? How about when you have a near real-time conversation in email, which has got to be like one of the stupidest things that we do. You send an email and then it comes right back, then you send another one and it comes right back. You use Gmail, it'll tell you. There's, a, there's an email on this thread waiting for you, and you go, what are we doing? 
Right. You know, yeah. can we take this to a Dave, synchronous Dave, mode? That's our world. That's our know? world. Let's get to text. I need some speed service, service now. Can you help us yeah, deploy this through our? We, we're not Silicon quite big enough for Express. Express. We're getting close. You know, What's we're ready. Like Whenever you're ready, we're ready. Awesome, Jay. It's been great to see you on the Cube. Thanks for coming on the program. We appreciate it. Um, what is the coolest thing you've seen at the show here? Uh, you've been the keynote, you've been moderating, uh, been on stage. What's the coolest moment for you personally, and what's the coolest thing you've seen? <laughs> well, the coolest moment for me personally was bringing John Cleese on stage yesterday, <laughs> right, Monty Python fame. So that was a real thrill. Um, the hardest part was going on stage after he came off. Right? <laughs> um, the coolest thing I've seen was what I watched this morning in the keynote. Mm. Right? The mobility, the presence, I, I just can't wait for that. You know, the private instance thing is getting a lot of great reviews yeah. as well. Yeah. Were you b prototyping that early on internally? Is <laughs> well, or, no. Or? And the reason is that I get as many instances as I want free any time. Okay. Right? So that's really not that important for me internally. That's okay. a can of dog food that I don't open up yeah, to yeah. because I've got others. Right. So, yeah, I don't, uh, when I'm out there talking to customers and any commercial aspects come up, I'm kind of like, sorry, I, I don't know, I get it all free, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, but we are really excited to enable that, that broader community. And uh, the, the store is just going to blow this whole thing wide open. You, know, I was, you feel I, good about the store? Hmm? You feel good about the store? Oh, yeah, this is going to be great. I, I was sitting with a CIO, I think it was um, in uh, Minneapolis, and I was talking about our share site where, where people could share solutions, code requirements. And I said, now we're going to build that into a store. And he said, wait a minute, you guys are going to build a store and then the ISVs are going to be able to build stuff for me? And he, he kind of said, I knew I bought the right product, <laughs> right? He, he, instantly, really he yeah. instantly grasped the power the ecosystem. It's yeah, of, of what all it's, those developers can build for us. It, Niche solutions that we'll yeah. never get to. Yeah. Um, it's riveting. You know, I mean, it really is powerful. Platforms yeah. beat products. Well, the right thing now. that you're nailing yeah, it's too. It's very analogous to the iPhone, right? You've got this powerful platform. Apple built some apps so that it at least was a phone. But then when the App Store happened and the Boom. proliferation yeah. of solutions is just unbelievable. Oh, you guys are. That's exactly what's going to happen. You're building on your base and you, your strategy is not land grabbing, right? You're not trying to go into every adjacent market, but you can with little tentacles, the apps. And then the App Store, what a great story. You guys, I think, are, and the, the, the asynchronous, the real time is so really powerful because the web is all browser based and you got mobile and everyone wants more mobile like. Right. And it's got to be real yeah. time. Yeah, that's going to be a big, big step for us to get the, the mobility aspects really working well. What you saw this morning. That's okay. going to be huge. Okay, so when are you going to take six months off and go skiing again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'll, You're a public company. I'm not going to say that on the air because Frank will probably be watching, right? So that's going to be a while, I think. Great. What's next for you? New building? Just give us a quick update. Next next six months or a year, what's your roadmap look like? Well, um, we're like I said, we're systematically going around the company trying to knock stuff down. I'm really excited that our HR team is actually starting to use the service creator and build things on their own, mm. right? Because I cannot serve the needs of the company fast enough with my resources and, and my peers get frustrated that we can't knock down all the, all the issues and oftentimes we're focused on the big stuff and we can't take care of the little stuff for them. So, my, so different parts of our organization are starting to take matters into their own hands with that service creator product. Mm. And my HR team has been working on a non-production Fuji instance building out solutions already. Um, so I'm, I think that's going to be great. That's, that's going to be a big thing for us this year yeah. is enabling people to start solving their own problems and, and doing that in a controlled manner that doesn't break things. It's going to be fantastic. Um, we're, we're adopting our own uh, portfolio management products and uh, starting to run a tighter ship that way. So we've got all kinds of things to do. Now moving down the street, yeah, that's uh, that's a big one for us. But but my team has has been highly involved in our global expansion. You know, it's not just moving down the street in Santa Clara; it's standing up offices all over the world, expanding uh, sales offices, building new support facilities. We're very busy. the The roadmap of worldwide expansion is really has been yeah. really surprising. In terms of my job, that's probably the thing that surprised me the most coming in. The last time I was a CIO, I was in a rapidly shrinking company, right? <laughs> so doing it in a rapidly growing company, what I didn't see coming was kind of that aspect of we're, our global footprint makes things yeah. really complicated, and it's a big, big job for us. Jay, thanks so much for sharing some time and, and insights here on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. Jay Anderson, CIO, 
ServiceNow. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs> 